So I think time spent in the markets, you can't put a price on that. You can't really put a finger on that, but it's, it's looking at charts, looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of charts. And then you start to connect the dots. Welcome back to the Simcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode fifteen, and um, it's a, you know it's a real pleasure and an honor actually uh, to welcome uh, Jack from Alpha Charts. Jack, welcome to the show, man. Hey, John. Thanks for having me, man. How's it going? It's going really well, and you know, honestly, like I was saying, it's kind of an honor because I've actually been following you on Twitter, uh, geez, since twenty nineteen, I think. Wow. Awesome. So Thank yeah, you. yeah. And my personal uh, Twitter account, I've been following you for a while. And, you know, back then I was, um, I was big into like can slim mm -hmm. uh, methods, you know, Bill O'Neill, Minervini, stuff like that. And just looking for, um, you know, like-minded traders online. And you always were posting some really stellar, you know, chart ideas and uh, technical analysis and stuff like that. So it's, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Cool. Well, so, you know, welcome to the SimCast. And why don't we get started to, um, you know, with a, a little background info uh, okay. from you've, you've been trading for how long now? And yeah, been trading for probably about eight years now. So um, I've been trading for about eight years, my own money, um, real trades, obviously. Um, and, you know, I start off small, right? Because when you first start trading, you don't know what you're doing. You think you do at the time, but but you really don't know what you're doing. So, you know, you start off small and, and um, you make mistakes. And uh, I'll tell you about my my biggest mistake i like to tell the story so i was in jc penny at the time and the thing was in a bad downtrend right this now was wait before. a second were you were you in jc penny shopping with your wife or were you in jc the stock oh okay okay yes i was in jc penny <laughs> the stock because i was right? going to say shopping with your wife might be a bad downtrend too you that's know? true too that hurts the <laughs> curve. um anyway so i kept buying the dip in jc penny thinking stores been around forever that what can happen so that was probably my the best lesson I ever learned was losing about 50% of a very small account in that particular wow. trade. So it was a big drawdown for um, as a percentage. Luckily, it was a small dollar amount, which was really good for me. Um, but I learned a lot from that trade. And, and the number one thing I learned us, take take us back to that, like, were you like, what got you into JCPenney to begin with? Um, I think, you know what, I was looking at short float, I was looking at some of the metrics and, um, and really in the end, I'm like, how much lower can it go? It's gone down, you know, so much. And this was right when it was probably anywhere from like the six to $8 range. Right. So I'm like, okay, okay. It's, it's in that range. And, and again, every time then it'd get a little bounce, I'm like, okay, I felt smart at that particular moment. And then boom, it rolled right back over. And I right. kept buying the dip in that particular stock. And it's not near and dear to my heart. No one works there. I don't know anything about it. I don't even shop in that store, to be honest with you. Wow. But I felt like it had been around forever and, and, and it'll eventually come back, right? And then I'll be well positioned. So and, you're thinking um, like value, you know, exactly, exactly. average down. Uh, all that, all, all that. that and I, I think it's very common among people just starting out to think in that way. And, um, and then luckily... When I first started out, you know, I'm married. Me and my wife had a deal, right? We always have a deal. How much money can we start out with and invest and all that kind of stuff? And um, and luckily she limited me to a, a reasonable amount. But yeah, so I kept buying. So it was down about 50% and I finally sold it. And I took probably a few weeks or a month off to really go back and review and think and and decide what what just happened, right? Yeah. And um and it, it comes, it came down to one really simple thing. And it's the rule that from that point forward, and this was I think around 2015-ish, if I had, a, I think, um, buy things going up. Don't buy things going, I mean, it sounds simple, right. but if it's not, if the chart isn't going from the bottom left to the top right, yeah, there's no reason to buy it. If it's not above its moving averages, whether, you know, whatever you choose. I like um, the mm -hmm. nine and 23 day EMAs. That's the ones I like. Mm -hmm. um, if price isn't above that, there's no reason to be involved in that stock. And, and that lesson has been so important for me personally in my trading, um, you know, suck with me. Where, where you know, after that JCP experience, um, were you, did, did, did that get you into like studying, like, how does this work? Or, you know, was that kind of like your early days? And it was like, you know what, okay. I've got to actually figure out how this works. That was my earliest days, right? That was before I read yeah. how to make money in stocks. That was before I saw, I've read Minervini's books and, and 
a bunch of others along the way. Yeah, that was way before I even knew what I was looking at. I just thought I w- I could do this because it looks easy, right? Mm-hmm. You know, trading's easy. Yeah. So right. Um, <laughs> right. Exactly. So uh, yeah. So it was way before that. Was, that was like my first experience and and i'm kind of glad it happened early it happened when my account was small and it, it happened um and i'm lucky i learned the lesson from it because i didn't continually repeat the same mistakes over which is you know common too for humans yeah well talk to us then a little bit about that process because it sounds like you and i have kind of similar uh stories there probably a lot of people you know where you have that like initial like just horrible loss and And then it's like, you know, obviously I'm not doing the right thing here. And then, you know, either you catch the bug, you know, Mm -hmm. and start um, and start doing your homework, start researching, start reading, start studying the guys who've gone before us and and have charted their paths. um, No pun intended. But, you know, what what was that process like for you um, moving from JP or JC Penny to, I guess, um, you know, where you started maybe finding a little bit of consistency? Yeah, I mean, so I think time spent in the markets, you can't put a price on that. You can't really put a finger on that, but it's it's looking at charts, looking at thousands and thousands and thousands of charts. And then you start to connect the dots, right? And then you do the you do your research, you know, you start following. Listen, I remember when I first started on Twitter, I would follow hundreds and hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. Well, now I only follow I follow less than a hundred because I'm only gonna follow people that are looking at the markets in the way that I would want to look at the market. Cause I don't want them distracting me. I don't want the noise. And right. that took years to figure that out. Like that just doesn't, doesn't happen overnight, at least not for me. It takes years to figure that out, you know? Um, so re- reducing that noise and, and then looking at thousands of charts and figuring out that, Hey, things that are going down usually continue going down. I mean, look at Peloton right now. I mean, just yeah. absolutely brutal. Right. But it was a huge winner a few years ago, huge winner. So it's, um, yeah, identifying in relative strength, right? So I did, I've done a lot of relative strength work. I like relative strength. I think that's where, you know, a lot of great ideas come from. You know, so I took relative strength and, and, and some of the other ideas that, again, I didn't make any of them up. There's nothing I do in my trading that's original. Nothing. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know, I mean, that's, that's so telling too, because, uh, you know, it, it's like, when you're moving from those initial losses to actually like trying to find your own trading style, it's almost like, would you say, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it's kind of like you're building your system. Is that, is, would that be fair to say? hundred percent, hundred percent. And, and as part of that, you, maybe you, you, you learn things along the way, like you were saying how to make money in stocks by Bill O'Neill, you know, Minervini, you know, and whoever else, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and taking like the bits and pieces that you learn and then maybe amalgamating that with your chart experience. So like, like you're saying that observation, you're like, you know what? I see this, I see that, I see that, you know, so you're not taking the same trades they would be taking, but you're building your system. Absolutely. Yeah. And and again, you know, amalgamating is the perfect word right there. So I'm taking bits and pieces from all these people that are proven winners, right? Um, and making my own system again, nothing in my system is original, but the way I use my system is unique. Well, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of interesting because I hear a lot of people talk about personality in trading, like your system is unique. How, how would you describe your trading personality? Um, well, I mean, so I think that, um, you know, I'm a swing trader. That's my time frame. It's good okay. to just get that out on the table. Um, yeah. You know, um, and um, I work full time. I'm not a hundred percent trader. Um, so okay. we'll put that out there also. Um, so, yeah. So as far as personality goes, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to, I mean, I don't know the answer to that question. Tough question, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's one of those introspective, like, hmm. Um, well, would you say that you're, I mean, obviously you, I think swing trader kind of encompasses a lot of, of that. So you're not really like long-term investor, but you're also not like in and out during the day. Gotcha. All right. So, so yeah. you're, you're looking for like those week long, you know, two weeks, month long type trades is true. So, so I'll do, we have in my family, uh, my wife and I, we decided when I was going to start trading, we have our retirement accounts, which are long-term dollar cost averaging, S&P style stuff. 
Okay. And then we have a trading account, which is, you know, where we understood that if it goes to zero, it's not going to change what we do day in and day out, right? That was from the beginning, that was our, our deal. Our, our, and I think it's important to have that deal with, with your spouse or significant other, because it affects them also, your trading. Um, but um, as far as, yeah, I'm a swing trader by nature. Um, and and I'll, I'll tell you, if you want my personality, I hate losing money. I, I know a lot of people talks about, talk about, oh, you know, it was a good loss or anything like that. I, I hate losing money in the market. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, th that's part of my personality. And in general, I like to try to ride the 23-day EMA up. I like to use that as my stop. Um, in general, two closes below 23-day EMA, that's an automatic sell signal for me. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's awesome. There, I think there's three things there that I'd, I'd like to touch on. Um, maybe the 20, uh, you said the 23 EMA? I use the 23, yeah. 23, yeah. We'll mm -hmm. touch on that in a little bit when we get to the charts. I'd love to see that. Um, but you, you touched on two things there that uh, I think are, you know, really important psychologically. Um, one, you said that even if it goes to zero in the family trading account that you're managing, you're okay with it. You know, you hear so many traders that they're trying to make a quick buck and they're trying to pay their bills off of this thing. Do you feel like you maybe have, I don't know, has that taken some stress off of your shoulders? That's number one, you've got your, your wife on board. You guys have jobs. Mm -hmm. and, and two, you know, it's not going to affect you if the account goes to zero. So it sounds like you've already accepted the max risk before you ever start trades. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, I don't need my trading to pay the light bill this month. You know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. It's our extra money. And again, I'm still building. I'm not even taking withdrawals from the account yet. I'm still building my account up. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so the, the, there is no pressure on me to make money, which is, um, I think, really important because, you know, the psychological part of trading is just now really even being talked about, you know, and, and it, it, it is the piece i mean fomo is one of the strongest emotions to have and we also come to it there's you know no one's above fomo you know the people like to talk about that they are but it's not we all want to make money we want to go high oh, yeah. you know our accounts to grow and and twitter helps really fuel the fire that fomo because everyone wins on twitter oh, right yeah. there are no losses success theater right yes 100%. yeah look at look at my pnl mm -hmm. um no, that, yeah, that's so true, man. Um, well, let's, let's touch on the other thing I wanted to kind of circle back on. And that is that you hate losses, like you hate yeah. losing. So one, like, where do you think that comes from? Are you a pretty competitive, competitive guy in, in real life? Um, and two, do you feel like that has kind of like helped you cut losses quickly in, um, in your trading experience? Sure. Um, in real life, I, I am competitive, you know, obviously, and I think, I think it's a healthy competitive. It's not somebody that's over zealous with that, but yeah, sure. I want to, I want to win. Right. I mean, I, I think it's human nature to want to win and get ahead and all that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, and there are good losses, let's be honest. And, you know, if you cut something at, you know, a 3% loss or whatever your, whatever your risk tolerance is, and it continues to go down, it was a good loss. Right. Um, I was right. just in a trade. Um, I was doing some groceries for Sprouts Farmers Market. Um, I really liked that. The look of the chart looked great. Um, it turned on me, right? I took a like a one percent loss or two percent loss in there. Um, it's okay. You, have Go you got ahead. that chart handy? Like, you think uh, we could pull it up, and do a little sure. screen share? Sure, sure, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to just kind of like segue into maybe like your style, if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right. So this is what I was looking at at Sprouts. Um, and just so you see what's on my um, chart right now is I use um, hollow candles and this is a VWAP from the IPO back here. So I have an anchored VWAP from the IPO. I think that's always a good place to anchor VWAP as well yeah. as large, um, large volume candles. But so I like to put that on my chart. Um, and then this is the 200 days, my red line right there. Mm -hmm. And then you have a 50 day, which is the blue. That's just for context. I don't always use those. And a lot of times in trading, they really don't affect what I do at all. But I like to, to look at what the longer term trend is. Okay. And then you have the orange and the yellow. And orange, um, orange is the nine. Yellow is the 
um, 23 day EMA. And sometimes I put a five on there. Again, it depends on what I'm looking at. I'm just going to okay. take off the five. I'm going to take off the 200 and take off the 50 just to um, keep the chart a little bit cleaner. Um, nice. Yep. So price, volume, a couple moving averages. That's what I like to look at. So looking at this chart, um, what I was looking at was a breakout of this potential area. It looked like, you know, resistance mm -hmm. multiple times in the past. We have a nice little breakout right here. So I'm going to zoom in just on that area. You know, um, a nice trending market up. I like this. You say, why the 23 day? And this is the reason why, because a lot of times um, price likes to undercut the 20, but tends to stop at the 23. At least that's what I found Okay. a lot. So that, that's, that's my reason. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why the 23 day um, EMA <laughs> over 20 or, but listen, well, they look you know very similar. I agree, but that's actually, you just answered the question I was going to ask you about the 23 day, because what I was going to ask you is like, do you, in your stop out, do you, um, do you look for like a, a hard break and like a close under, or maybe like the second day close, or is like, is it just that stop just kind of like sitting on the 23? You know, I like for it to break the 23. I got out on this day, probably down here somewhere, um, okay. probably intraday. Um, this was an ugly bar on volume. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, take notice for right. sure on this one. Um, and then in the morning, there was follow through to the downside. So I cut it probably I, what I did was, and I, I did, I remember what I did. I put my stop at the, just under the low of this day right here. Okay. Gotcha. So basically it went down, broke this low right here mm -hmm. and it just stopped me out. So um, you're just looking for that, that extra commitment through the 23. Um, exactly. After some kind of bearish action. Right. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Um, now, yeah. I'm curious, where did you initiate this position? I believe I initiated on this bar right here. If I okay. Right. So you were looking for like that, um, that, that little break out there from mm -hmm. maybe a week or so before that. And exactly. Yeah, exactly. So cool. I believe I bought it on this bar right here. You know, it, did his thing. I was fine with this right mm -hmm. here. Didn't bother me much. You know, I was, I was on watch obviously at this point, but, but it was acting appropriately. Um, looked great here, man. I was real happy right here. Yeah. And then, then this happened and that changes everything. Right. And you have to be able to change your mind. Right. I, like, like, like I was like, Oh yeah, that and Kroger, was, I own both of them and they both look great, mm -hmm. but then grocery stores got hit this day and, and, and that's it. I'm out. Right. The next day. Got it. Now, how much of this do you and your trading, like, for example, um, you know, these are larger, uh, larger cap names, I would imagine, you know, mid caps, large caps. What um, what would you say is the level of importance on keeping the indexes in mind? Well, um, I like to use indexes for context of are we in a healthy market? Because I think that's probably the most important question we could ask ourselves. And I spend literally every Saturday trying to answer that question. That's what I do on my Saturdays. I try to answer, are we in a healthy market? Because if the market's healthy and going up, trading is much easier, right? right. If the market is kind of sick or choppy or, or however you want to call it. It's going to be very hard to make a dollar because you're going to get busted on the downside. You're going to get busted on the upside. It's going to be, um, it's going to be rough. So that is really the question that, that I think is the most important question we can ask ourselves. Are we in a healthy market? And I use the indexes as well as um, I like bond rate, I look at bond ratios. I look at, um, you know, a bunch of different, um, you know, uh, sentiment, like the put call ratio. I'll, I'll pull that up real fast. Um, so here's the equity only put call ratio. I, I like to watch this again, okay. you know, and I, I, I literally put on my charts, you know, this is what people are thinking when they get either very bearish or very bullish, you know? Um, and so we're starting to see some of that very bearish sentiment come in. <laughs> I like is, those notes, man. That's, that's really. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's le legit. Like that's what's happening in the market. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're starting to get into this type of range, which mm -hmm. is good. Cause it may mean that, you know, maybe a bottom could be happening over the next couple of weeks or, or who knows when, but yeah. Um, yeah, the more extreme we get again, and this right here, this is no signal. This is 
nothing, right? It's a trending market usually or something like that. Um, but only when things get to extremes yeah. and usually the extreme fear is much stronger than extreme um, optimism, right? Of extreme bullishness. So this is a huge signal. This are, okay, you know, maybe things are getting overheated. We need a little pullback, but as you can see, it comes right back into here quite often. And I put the dates right. each time and, you know, I put these arbitrary lines where it seems like yeah. things got too optimistic. That's neat, man. I've never used that. And that's the pull put call ratio. And, and so, yeah, I mean, you, you've got a, a pretty broad segment there, which looks just like healthy market mm -hmm. environment. So pullbacks, you know, runs, pullbacks, runs, and then, Obviously, on the left there, that I'm assuming that was COVID scare of 2020. Yep, 31220. Yeah. So when we uh, 2019, so yeah, it goes back and got it. Yeah. yeah. So when we get into those levels, that's when you're watching CNBC and they're saying that the the sky is falling and yeah, yeah we got a markets in turmoil or whatever yeah. you call that episode and and we're hedge good to funds go. are on there screaming for the Fed to do something and right. yeah, Ackman yeah. or whoever that guy is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, yep. man, I remember that. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, so that's how I use uh, sentiment. Yeah, I don't do a ton of sentiment studies, but I felt like I feel like this one kind of encompasses because it's actually actually putting people putting money to work, and it's the equity only, which is really important too, versus the total put call ratio. Because okay. total put call ratio, you're getting the hedges in there, right? And it's not really a, a I don't feel it's a a good reading of what's really going on. So yeah. this is equities only. So it just kind of gives you like circling back then to the original question, like about the indexes, like you're, you're kind of using like these broader tools, like the uh, just checking the index to get a feel for where we are in the market. Now, let's talk about maybe like, you know, kind of going back to your um, your sprouts or, or any mm -hmm. of the other uh, recent trades that you wanted to show. Like how how do you use that to then guide you? Um, is it more of like individual stock basis? Like, hey, if this thing's setting up, even if the market is looking like it's about to roll over, I'm still going to take a chance on it. So recently, the market's been really interesting because, you know, if you look at the SPX, it looks very different. It looks very different, at least back in this range, mm -hmm. than the Qs looked, right? Oh, Which yeah. was very, very different. Um, and so I was in the camp that this is just normal rotation, and so we just want to be in the relative strength stocks and, and there's still some money to be made, right? And basically it was financials, it was oil and gas, and then some grocery stores were holding up and, and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, and that was true up until a few days ago, right? right. And, then, and then, you know, eventually they come for everybody, right? And the market rolled over. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, so that's when I start looking at relative strength type stuff. Um, I use scans, I use FinViz to do most of my scanning. Okay. Um, and I have, I run multiple different scans on there and, um, and I keep, you know, obviously my lists of what's showing up, what looks good. What do I see on, sometimes I'll see repeats and then that, that, that tells me a lot of information too. Right. Yeah. Um, and by the way, my scans have been pretty empty recently. <laughs> Not but yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So like in this market environment that we're currently in, like, are you in cash or not right now? Or, or you've got some setups or. I actually this morning bought some QLD um, okay. as it was coming into. So I don't play um, short term that often, but for this uh, leveraged ETF, I do play short term. Um, and so it was coming into this potential area of support, way extended from its moving averages. I think that's a high probability that we get a bounce here. Um, you know, so I'm looking forward to do something like this, come back into the moving averages, let them catch up. And then my expectation would be, it's at least going to retest this one time. Yeah. So I'll try to sell once it bumps up into the moving averages. If it keeps going, great. Then I'll look for my normal types of stocks and, and setups that I'm looking for. Got you it. know, things that are outperforming. Um, so I made a few dollars here, you know, in it. Um, and, and, you know, if it, if it retests and then it bounces up again, again, great. You know, we'll, uh, we'll play that as it comes. And if it just keeps going, right, it could essentially even break through that's a different story. Either way, I'll, I'll be all out at that point. Fair enough. Yeah. So it sounds like that when the market starts rolling over, you, you kind of go into tactical mode where you start looking for maybe shorter swings, bounces, things like that, that are um, not in, would you say your normal wheelhouse of strategies in a trending environment? Yeah, that's exactly right. I, right now I have, I would say 
80% cash, about 20% is in this particular strategy. So um, cool. tight, you know, good risk. I'll use the low of the day here as my yeah. stop. Um, and yeah, exactly. And, and I go to a short term tax, I don't exactly work, uh, right word there, tactical. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, you know, two, three days, I'll be out of this one way or the other, you know. Cool. Yeah, well, you know, it sounds like you're, um, I'm kind of picking up a little bit more of your your trading personality here. Like, would you say you're mostly long biased then? And then you're, you're looking for just those opportunities in a trending environment? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Part? I'm long biased. And, and the reason why is the market is made to go up. Um, uh, let me just get a better SPX chart. Let's use that one. Yeah. So when you look at like the market, you know, yeah, it does this, right? So I think not being long biased is a mistake, right? That's a, uh, you know, it goes from the bottom left to the top right. And so, um, yeah. This is a scary chart, actually, if you're that into a, a, Elliot is, Wave. Yeah, yeah, Elliot Wave, you got the five waves. Are we in the last innings here? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's something that you know, I've been watching for a while. This is a monthly chart, so it could be, you know, this year, next year, or never occur, right? Um, but yeah, but that's kind of a scary chart going back to the, the, the great right. you know, depression of, you know, and the recovery. So I guess we'll be looking for a little uh, three-wave ABC, ABC coming here pretty yeah, soon. Right? Exactly. And actually, if you... Uh, just, this is just kind of fun. Where is it? Where's my favorites at? It's yeah. And for those of you who may not know, that's, we're talking Elliott wave theory. It's um, I haven't studied it. Jack probably has a lot better than I have, but I do yeah. try to kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. And it's got a little divergence there into wave five. Anyway, I'm not yeah. a big Elliott wave guy. I, there's much smarter people on that, but I have done some study of it. And again, this just caught my eye from a very, very long-term perspective on the markets. That is interesting that the, um, is that what what um what have you got thrown up down there as far as that histogram what is that this is something i got from a guy named trader marcuso i don't know if you know him or not great <laughs> trader on, on twitter and this is the um this is the i believe it's up down new net uh new highs new lows net for highs. the queues oh, interesting yeah. okay yeah so, so definitely if and if you go up to the chart yeah sorry let's get that expand back up Mm -hmm. that's monthly back to the monthly. yeah so it's it's almost like we've got a divergence there where we're, we're kind of like making new highs but the new yeah. highs new lows were, were going down yep yep. yep and yep, if yep. you if you look at that prior one was that 2020 when it had a big red dip in that net highs right here yeah right as the mark right before yep. the market was going down something like yep. that yep oh that's, that's cool man cool yeah, yeah. Just, you know you put all these different things and who knows if that's if this is right or not right i have no idea sure. that's this is the start of some gigantic massive you know you know depression that we're about to start in but it's just <laughs> something that that's kind of interesting that's well there. you know what's interesting and and while we're on this topic would you mind throwing up the gold chart oh sure i've been watching that yeah too. you know it's this is something that's interesting to me um that we actually have a divergence here for the first time in a long time in that stocks are going down, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not bringing gold or silver down with it yet. Yeah. Um, and, and at the same time, like Bitcoin, all the, all, you know, the alternative currencies and things like that are going down. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I just found that kind of interesting <laughs> that we had um, maybe a little bit of divergence there between the old school precious metals and, and stocks, which usually kind of act in sync. Any thoughts yeah. there? Yeah, no, I mean, listen, well, as far as crypto goes, it's funny. I just started um, for a long-term account in crypto, right? This is not a trading account. It's, you know, small amount of money. Again, if it goes to zero, it doesn't change my life type of money. Right. Um, and, you know, my realization is it's not a hedge to anything. It's its own thing. And it's probably the riskiest of risk types of, of stocks. Mm -hmm. So it's going to potentially even front run. See, if, when I see crypto start to recover, I will almost guarantee you the market will follow that. That means risk is on. If people are buying crypto, the riskiest of the risk type of, of, of um, assets out there, um, yeah. that's going to be one of the signals I'm actually looking for, for this, for recovery in this particular market. And you got to look at Bitcoin. Now, obviously you look at everything, but Bitcoin yeah. being the leader, Ethereum too. Can you throw um, that up there? I'm, I haven't even looked at Bitcoin today. I'm wondering what that's been doing. Yeah, so, that's a weekly chart. Let me change it to weekly, daily. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's down. Yeah. Heavy <laughs> down there. 
I kind of had, um, I had, I don't know about you. I had a key level around 36 and 34 from a long-term, um, anchored VWAP level, but yeah, this is the chart I usually use. Yeah. So there's okay. that. Ethereum. There's that. Oh, is this Ethereum? Sorry. I have a bunch of these. Here we go. That's my chart. That's... There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So these were the levels that I was kind of watching. This was a key level, which broke through today. Hmm. This is, I mean, in my opinion, and here's your VWAP from the top. So I anchored the VWAP from the highs and uh, it's got a lot of work to do, man. I mean, it, it, I think it could easily hit 30,000. Yeah. I've got a, would you mind throwing up a uh, anchored VWAP on that just to kind of see what. Uh, sure. From where. You see the high volume day right before June when it had that big flush out and then it kind of reclaimed uh, right there. That so big right one. Here. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. So we're actually trending below that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was a good spot too. Cause it was, you thought right here with the balance right here. Yeah. That, and then you have a yeah. nice little pinch going. So that was kind of a nice look to it, but it broke it to the downside and look yeah. at IWM. Let's just talk about indexes real quick. Hmm. I mean, this was a year long consolidation pattern that broke to the downside after the prior trend was up. Like that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's real bad. I mean, there's not a lot of, of shares traded in here, which means that the air is thin, right? Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, you know, there's a good likelihood that we come back and we, we tend to go much lower unless something changes soon. Yeah. And you know, that's an interesting looking chart because if you look at that, let's say, you know, before November, when we broke out, I mean, that thing looks, it almost looks, it looks like a nice little bullish volatility contraction pattern or something Absolutely. there, right? Right. Low, a uh, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low, all the way up, boom, yeah. breakout. But then you got the false breakout, which. So it's almost like doubly bearish when, when you've got something that bullish that fails yeah. so easily. Yep. And nothing in the market should happen, but history tells us that in healthy markets, this continues higher. Right. And it didn't. And that in, in and of itself is information. That's the kind of stuff. And IWM is an equal weighted chart. You know, if you may look at the QQQE, equal weight Qs, you know, it had a head and shoulders top that confirmed already. So good chance, you know, this 72 area is going to get tested. Now it may well, happen tomorrow. Yeah. But, but yeah. Well, Joe, yeah. why don't we, um, I mean, these, it's, it's definitely like a hands-off environment, especially if you're on the, you know, long bias trader, like what would you say were some of like, you know, when you, when you get into a trending environment, assuming we have a nice little consolidation this year and, and we, um, you know, break out again, eventually, sure. what is it that you look for? You know, I mean, we've looked at sprouts. Is there like, um, you know, we've, we talked offline about the fractal nature of the market. Mm -hmm. For so, sure. you know, and I know that a lot of trading sim, uh, simcast viewers are day traders. And I kind of wanted to, you know, maybe segue into how if, if somebody is day trading, right, and they're maybe reaching their full potential in day trading, you know, how can they scale that into wealth building through swing trading, so to speak, sure. you know, with, with maybe like similar setups? Sure, absolutely. I mean, so my setups tend to be things, um, Again, I think most of your day traders probably look for also double bottoms, bull flags, um, high type flags. If you can find one, that that's a mm -hmm. great spot. You know, um, you know, consolidation within a base. You know, flat bases and, and that kind of thing. Um, so let's see if we can let's see um, see if the indexes has anything good that I can. You know, something like this right here, like this breakout right here is perfect. And mm -hmm. I'll be honest, the breakout with the retest is exactly, it is probably the, the best setup out there. A retest yeah. that holds. So kind oh, of- that's cool. I mean, that almost looks like a, a nice little volatility contraction pattern there. Yep, absolutely. Boom, retest held 23 day and all moving averages are moving higher. So then I'm now my goal is just to ride this trend as long as I can. Yeah. And if I was, if I happened to buy this particular day right here, this breakout, mm -hmm. you know, I would have wrote it to probably here. You know, you know, because right here you're thinking it's just consolidating again, mm -hmm. um, and it did it to, to some extent, uh, but this would have got me out on this day right there, and then I would have captured whatever that distance was, and let's see how let's see how long it was. So that would have been forty five bars, so about seven weeks. 
Gotcha. So yeah. I would have been in that trade seven weeks. Sometimes I will take profits. If things get too extended from the moving averages, I'll take a piece off. Right. Like um, something like this. Looking at this candle right here and this candle right here, no progress was made. I, I probably would take a little something off right in here just to nail down some profits. Gotcha. You know, that's cool. Can you zoom in on that BCP pattern that we have sure. there? I'd like to kind of maybe do a little deep dive on that. And, um, you know, one thing that I've learned, I'm sure you, you, you study as well, like, um, you know, Minervini, those kind of guys, do you ever take, um, like cheat entries, you know, like early entries? Are you, are you waiting? No, I take cheat entries all the time. But so could you talk to us a little yeah. bit about your style there? Sure. So in something like this, I would take a cheat entry like right in here, right? Okay. So that, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. As it's making the right side of a potential base, mm -hmm. that would be my cheat entry right there. Um, I'd probably get long on this bar. Yeah, I hate chasing. So I probably yeah. would pass if it was this bar. Yeah. But if I caught this bar, that would be a good entry for me right there as Oops. it's making the right side of a base. And again, it made a higher low right there. I can manage risk now. I right. could do it against this low, or I could probably more likely do it against this low right here. And that just keeps your wrist like super tight on this cheat entry. Exactly. You know exactly. what you're what you're um, you're showing there is really interesting. If you don't mind, I've got my little annotation tool up here. Sure. Go for it. You know, you know that little bar right there. Um, it's on two two volume bars that have receded in in volume. Um, you know, and this is something that uh, that I actually have written a tutorial on in the blog for Trading Sim on how to use this, this, this volume kind of drying up here. And then like you were saying, rocketing out of there on that, uh, that cheat trend line entry, when you've got a nice little flag pattern that, that formed there. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that I'm seeing is you've almost got like a little mini reverse head and shoulders there. Absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't even see that, but you're absolutely right. You could do one of those and something like that. That's really cool, man. So, you know, yeah. it's just, it's something that you can see on an intraday chart and, and maybe we can pull up a, um, an example of that here in just a minute and I'll throw up a, an intraday example that looks like that. But sure. that, that got you in there early, right? right? And then where would, where would you target on that? Would you maybe high a day uh, or <laughs> I say high of day, <laughs> high of the, uh, you know, the, the, the prior high up here? Yeah. So I would probably take something off into here. I probably would leave something on though, because again, I'm hoping that it gives me just a little bit of, um, you know, we pull back a little bit and then we break out. That's what, after a run like this, I'm not expecting it to go straight up. I'm gotcha. expecting a pullback into the moving averages. That's normal price action. Right. Then what it does there, that's, that's where we have to manage risk. Again, reset the risk management. And that's my expectation. If it rolls over, then I'd be out and be so you're out. stopping out in here. Once we get that kind of that exactly. gap down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And a gap down would probably put me out on this bar right here. Those okay. gaps tell me again, it's, it's the psychology of the market. You know, a gap says there's a lot of sellers in this particular name. Right. So, so I'm more likely to go out just on the first bar and not wait for the second bar because in the end I can always buy it back. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm a small guy compared to institutions and everything else. Right. So I don't need, you know, I could get in and out very nimbly in this market. Well, let's just assume you do like what um, if this is kind of like your your broader volatility contraction pattern type setup. You know what? Um, where are you getting back in here? Yeah, so this is too steep for me. I don't like this. So I wouldn't not this would not be a cheat entry for me in here just because. It's just again too steep for me, so I would wait for the breakout here. Okay, so yeah. you're like, not you're not thinking maybe like this little I don't know if it's it's like a maybe a little cup and handle type deal here. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. Um, you know, I'm looking at this point. I'm probably looking at the bigger pattern okay. for me. So that's why. But you're right. There's a, a cup and handle looking pattern right there. Um, higher low, higher low, which I really love. Um. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So again, there's the, there's the, you know, when you go to a 30 minute chart, let's see if I can get this in 30 minutes. No, um, where are we at here? We're over, over here. Yeah. So it's, you would see some of that much easier with the, you know, there's your cup, there's your handle, mm -hmm. and boom, off to the races. Gotcha. Right there. So yeah, so it works again on any time frame, you know, um, you know, 
however you want to call this this particular pattern um, you know what i think was setting up similarly if you do you have you ever traded tesla or looked at tesla i have i have i actually have that one annotated pretty i remember yeah. tesla putting in just a beautiful volatility contraction pattern not too long ago I actually did a big markup on tesla so nice yeah. yeah that's the one right there in um from like september to uh november look at that let me see it may, it may be clean on the weekly hold on one second yeah it's gonna be clean on the weekly chart just because i think that's how i annotated it i love how you annotate man that's that's awesome yeah i don't do it on everything but um but yeah, I annotated, you know, again, I look for that um, contraction volume also, the, the drying up the volume. Yeah. It's just really messy right now, but I apologize for that. But uh, let's do... Maybe just hide them for a second. Yeah, yeah. they're gone. <laughs> All right. Um, so where were you talking about now? Uh, right up in uh, September. Well, actually, uh, I mean, that, that was one there from like the beginning of 2021 but uh it was it was more of like a flag pattern in between september and november of, of 2020 right there yeah right gotcha. where you are i mean yeah, just and this look is a how, weekly chart by the way yeah let me, let me, let me change it to the daily because it's probably going to show it much better for what you're looking for okay yeah, yeah. um other way Sorry. september okay here yeah there we go like right uh or no it was right right here <laughs> yeah we're good yeah there we go yeah. cool sorry we, we like to draw on charts around here absolutely yeah, if, you, if you zoom in on that it just mm -hmm. it reminds me a lot of kind of like what we were looking at with the cues but you know very similar you know you've got you've got that one two three you know mm -hmm. four four little contractions there and then in each one you kind of see that volume um yeah contraction as well so it's like where's supply going you know it's it's just yeah. kind of drying up so exactly the sellers are are non-existent literally non-existent in this particular and if you look in to the left there was a lot of buyers yeah. and then afterwards nobody sold you know and then boom there's your volume breakout right there exactly the um, volume the expansion gap. there yep volume expansion beautiful moving averages all clumped together right it's, it's a great low risk setup and it really in that in the end no matter your time whatever time frame it is it's all about you know managing risk because the reward part will take care of itself if you manage risk exactly yeah um yeah especially yeah. If, the, if the market's good and, and the market has to be good with that right because if you look at more recently tesla it's having some problems recently right and it's not sure. terrible looking but if it takes out this low right here it's got some problems right mm -hmm. Again, and so for me, being below the moving averages right here, I wouldn't even think of trading this. And if you analyze the volume right there, where we are in this 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 current um, mm -hmm. this current structure, let me see if I can get my drawer out again here. Yeah, you know, you've got this you've got this base here, but notice how volume is is really elevated and into the kind of like the right hand side of this this base versus if you could maybe go back to that one we just analyzed mm -hmm. um yeah notice how like the difference that it was volume was receding down there yeah, sorry keep moving that's oh, all right <laughs> yeah but right yeah right in here absolutely and so when i yeah. see this I'll, I'll tell you what i think of to me this seems like institutions dumping shares mm -hmm. but trying to hide their hand that's interesting. So that's 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 how I you know, and again I could be wrong. What do I know? But but that's what the way I read it is that they don't want a big movement in price to show themselves, but it's elevated volume. It's no further um, uh, uh, movement higher, um, you know. And so to me, this is potentially yeah somebody trying to hide their hand, dumping shares again. I'm not saying it's going to go to zero or anything like that. I have no idea, but but that's what it seems like to me exactly exactly well you know what would be interesting we've seen an example then of like a nice consolidation um in the queues which is the indexes mm -hmm. in an individual stock you know in tesla would you mind if i take over and, and show like you know just kind of how that fractal nature works on an intraday basis yeah i'd love to see that go ahead cool yeah, so this is um, this is one that was was kind of a big runner the other day. I'm here on the 14th, I think. And if I go down, this is normally set up for my vertical charts, so I apologize for them being so sandwiched. 
But um, just to kind of give you a contextual look here, you've got a multi-day breakout happening here after a really big high volume day, right? Mm -hmm. And so the thesis there is, you know, most people think of these low price stocks as just kind of crappy stocks that are going to gap up and then go back down. And then, you know, 99% of the time they do. But occasionally what you get and what we've been seeing in the small cap world is a lot of these guys are, are gapping up, shorts are piling in, and then they're not getting let out. So, you know, ideally, if you short this thing, you want it to just kind of let it come back, go back where it came from, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And that's going to eventually, uh, you know, let you unload your shares over time. Now, the, the problem is, is if, if you don't get out and you took a heavy, you know, short position here on millions of shares on that day, then I've got a line here. At, at, it's called S1.71. So that's my, that's kind of like my anchored VWAP from this big day. And what that tells us is you've got shorts that are averaged in right mm -hmm. at that price. So consider that your watermark, right? If, if the tide rises above that one seven, it's potential that the shorts could be in trouble. So if we dial this into the, um, the intraday chart, let me first kind of show you, um, let me take a look at the, the, the 30 minute chart and show you the, the same kind of pattern that we were looking at with Jack on Tesla. And you can see, Mm -hmm. Look at that. So that, that prior run, right? So kind of like Tesla, you know, you're, you're strong to begin with, and then you're looking for the pullbacks to get bought up. And so we start putting in series of consecutive lower, or excuse me, higher lows. So the volatility is contracting. Notice way down here that volume, especially compared to what happened on this day, is pretty much absent, right? Right. Here's our watermark. Uh, with the yellow line. And once we get above that watermark, then it's, it's potentially game on. Um, we have a secondary structure here that, uh, that tries to take off. And then if we go to the intraday, and again, this is just trying to kind of show you how the market acts uh, in a fractal nature, right? So whether you're trading the low flow, small cap world, micro cap world, or big, big name Tesla names, it's all the same all the same kind of setup. So um, these were the notes from the prior day. We had a breakout. And then what was interesting was we had a massive, massive volume expansion um, on the continuation day. And if you look at that, it provides kind of like the flagpole backdrop for a level of support later in the day. And you notice that even if, if you were, um, even if you missed that first move, you've probably got shorts that are doing their best from that, that big volume day, trying to kind of average up here. You know, they're already in hot water. So it's like cover, 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 average, 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 average back in, you know? Mm -hmm. But the problem is they never get let out again. And just like Tesla, supply dries up. Notice the, notice the volume down here is just is nil. And then we get the secondary move kind of like that little uh, cup and handle pattern that we were talking about there. Yeah, what do you think, Jack? No, it looks great. Yeah, nice little like flaggish looking pattern too, right there. Yeah. You know, yeah, that that's so where would your where would your buy be? It would be the breakout right here. So on this right here, uh if you were not doing this as a swing trade way back way back here. Mm -hmm. And I've actually I took a trade today that I don't mind sharing if if you're interested, but Sure. It was, it was a similar setup. So, you know, I'm looking to buy dips that are holding on a swing trade, um, any kind of dips. Now, if you did not swing trade this and you wanted to just look at, at momentum intraday, considering that, you know, there's millions of shares being traded on this. So, you know, unless you're just really big, you, um, you can still get in and out. My, my thesis would be as long as I'm putting in higher lows, then I'm going to risk um, I like to draw trend lines and just kind of, you know, look for something similar to your cheat entry. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So on this one, if this were my shelf, we were coming into um, kind of the end of the day there, I would be looking for the volume to dry up into the shelf and then maybe risk here and, um, and, you know, take something like, 
a, a trend break here. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, you know, hammer the hot keys, get in here, um, see how it does take a little bit off just to pay myself at the highs. Cause it's just a natural, mm -hmm. uh, area for profit taking, take a little bit off. And then, uh, you know, if this consolidates well enough, um, and then we're at the end of the day and I, I really feel like shorts are stuck in there, then it could fuel a, a squeeze higher. So, yeah. I mean, think about it. you, you do the same exact thing I do just on, on a different time frame. Exactly. exactly the same. Yeah. No difference. <laughs> and you know, you know, what's interesting about this is I was telling you uh, from back in 2019, I started out as a swing trader. So, okay. you know, I studied Mark Minervini, um, Gil Morales and his voodoo mm -hmm. and, and pocket pivots and, and, you know, it wasn't until I went into day trading, I was like, the same darn thing is happening yeah. on just a smaller time frame. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, just started employing those, those same tactics and, um, and it works, you know? Yeah. So Real now, good. now here's a question for you though. You, um, you day trade. So do you hit a certain dollar figure say I'm done for the day or how do you stop yourself from being in front of the computer for right. the entire trading session? Cause when, the very short period of time that I actually tried day trading. Yeah. That was a thing that I really didn't like all that much was being in front of the, not having the freedom to walk away from the computer. Yeah. Great question. I, you know, for day traders, it's, it's something for me that I found a lot of anxiety by holding, holding trades overnight. Um, and so what I look for, I've, I've, you know, I've done a lot of back testing on the volatility contraction patterns and for intraday. And they typically happen right after 10 o'clock between 10 and 12. So I'll get in the, I'll get in the market, um, you know, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, see what's setting up. You know, I, I usually have a plan the day before I like to have a big picture plan. So this was a big picture plan for me, for example, uh, today, big, big high volume day. We get the pullback. And so I'm looking at this as a little 30 minute chart volatility contraction pattern forming. And when we found, um, if I go down to the 30 minute, we found that support yesterday uh, on a nice little washout. Mm -hmm. And so I got long at this key uh, anchored VWAP level at 216 on my 30 minute chart. I found it, I thought it was finding support. So got involved right around 2.17, uh, 2.18, took an overnight position, added to it on the pullback here this morning, uh, right around. So I was averaged in at 220. Once I made, I made another ad right up here on this pullback here. And so I was averaged in at 220 on this mm -hmm. trade. Now let me dial into the one minute because you'll see some volatility contraction patterns on the one minute and they occur very early in the day. So as you'll see here, lighter volume. So I'm not using big size here, not, mm -hmm. not going huge, um, but I am anticipating volume to come in because I've seen this happen over and over again. Uh, as we move higher, we get into that area where the, the shorts are underwater and they start to cover thinking that they could get squeezed. So here's our little volatility contraction pattern on a micro scale. We get another one right here. So I added, um, I added dips here and I added one more dip into this washout. And then I sold uh, the entire, well, I sold most of the position, two thirds of it into this action. And then this candle right here stopped me out on the remaining quarter of my position. So. And that's because it undercut the low uh, from a few months prior. Exactly. And like you were talking about, it was one of those big, scary drops. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I mean, if I, if I measure this move from my average um, entry, you know, it was a 16% uh, move in two days, right? Two days yeah. worth of work. And the great thing was, is if you look at the time frame here, I'm out at 1049 and I had an interview to do with this guy named Jack at 1130. So yeah. Beautiful. I had, to, I had to go take a shower and, and look presentable. <laughs> right. <laughs> but Absolutely no, if you, if you study these, um, a lot of times you'll get those big pushes, 10, you'll get a consolidation, a volatility contraction pattern into 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And that's what I, that's my main focus. And then by 12 o'clock, I'm usually done, usually done. 
Now, SBEV was an example of one that, you know, it, it took that, that afternoon. Uh, I didn't actually trade that because I wasn't in front of my computer at the time. So gotcha, gotcha. But, cool, it's man. funny that you say about the time frame because, you know, I started um, uh, using Trader Sync, which is a, a, a trade journal type uh, app application. Right. And, uh, and it logs when you, what time you take your trades. And one thing, and I just started using it this year. So I'm only about a month, month and a half into using it. But it shows me that when I take early morning trades, 9.30 to 10, even I think up to 10.30, my trades have failed over and over and over again. And really? it could be the type of market we're in. So I, I need more data to, for sure. But it right. shows the trades that I'm taking later in the day are, working are, for are successful. And so that's a great, great information knowing what time of day you are most successful trading. Absolutely. Now, mm -hmm. what's interesting too, though, is that you're mostly a swing trader. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking there, you, give me your thoughts on this. You know, when I swing trade, I typically like to kind of wait and see how the end of the day forms. You know, is it a weak close? Is it a strong close? You know, when am I going to take my position there? Do you think that might have anything to do with it? Yeah, I mean, it probably does. And, and you're 100% right. The closing is so much more important for swing trading than, than the open. The open, and actually the first 30 minutes, I mean, there's so many times where you see a gap in a reversal, especially right. recently. And yeah. I think that also plays into it, those those gap reversals. And and um, yeah, it's just a lot of misdirection. A lot of but that's a really important point. And, you know, that just kind of speaks to um, how, how, po how important it is to track, you know, track yeah. your results. Um, track your strategies. And I do the same thing. I, I don't use a trader sync, but I use something called chart log, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of cool. And I'm sure trader sync has the, uh, the same uh, uh, availability for like tracking setups, but have right. you found that like, maybe you could throw in criteria for cup and handle double bottom uh, volatility, contraction pattern, high tight flag, and then maybe test your test each one of those. Yes. So what it lets you do is you label them and then you mm -hmm. put a chart in there. So you see what you were looking at at the time. Okay. And cool. then you go back after the trade. And when you want to review it, you say, okay, here's what I was looking at. Here's what I did right. Here's what I did wrong. So on and so forth. Yeah. And you can also, based on the labels, chart which ones you've been successful with. Okay. So every time I see a cup and handle, my yeah. win rate is X, you know, so on and so forth. Solid. Yeah. You know, and that's something that we've implemented with, uh, trading sim is just the um, ability to track your analytics and tag, you know, what mm -hmm. setup it is. So, you know, I've heard so many things from really successful um, traders that psychology and mindset, a lot of times depends on just knowing what your probabilities are for success. Like, you know, if, yeah. for example, if, if Jack has a hundred trades of the cup and handle, and he sees that he wins 70% of the time, man, that's a no brainer. You got to take that trade every time, every <laughs> yeah. time. Right. right? Exactly. Time, yeah. yeah. Like there's no fear there. Like I know. Right. I'm going to exactly. win 70%. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's all numbers game. When, when it comes down to it, trading yeah. is all a numbers game. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Cool. Jack. Well, listen, man, this has been so much fun. You know, what else, is there anything else you'd like to share with our viewers? No, I mean, I think, you know, I think being self-taught traders, you know, there's no barrier to entry. We all can do it. Education, you know, and, and it is mostly free out there. You know, um, you know, if you spend the time and you don't give up and you start small and, and, and you grow your account, I mean, all, we all can be successful. It's not, you know, for me to be successful, you don't have to not be successful. We're, we can all be successful in this game, which is awesome. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. And, you know, we've got your, um, we've got your Twitter handle down underneath your video feed there, but tell us how, uh, and I know you've got a YouTube video, so tell us how we can find some more of your great content. Sure. Sure. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm at Twitter at alpha charge three, six, five on YouTube. Um, I'm also at alpha charge three, six, five. I put out, um, uh, on Saturday, you know, when I talk about the, you know, I spend my Saturday figuring out, are we in a healthy market? Um, I have a video called, um, uh, uh, state of the market, sorry, I forgot the name of it. Yeah. State of the market, um, where I go through all the different, you know, the bonds and, and, and sentiment and indexes and equal weight indexes. It's about 10 or 15 minute video. And it gives me a, a, a consensus of what is going on in the market and if we're healthy or not. And then Sunday I do a, um, a stocks to watch, which is setups. Again, I, I tend to focus on mid cap names and higher. Yeah. 
Um, but but yeah, but things that are setting up, things are outperforming, things that are just, uh, you know, that, that look like they give good risk reward entries. So that's how you find Fantastic. me again. I appreciate on on my I have a link to it in my uh, in my Twitter bio if you want to check that out. Well, we'll, we'll uh, definitely include those links below the YouTube video when we post it, and uh, so so definitely check that below. And to all our viewers, you really need to uh, give Jack a follow, especially if you're looking to get into that wealth building phase. Um, you know, and it doesn't take a whole lot of money, does it, Jack? No, it doesn't. I mean, it was it was just awesome, right? It does yeah. not. Start off small, make your mistakes if you're just starting off, and go at it. A lot of misconceptions that swing trading is builds wealth slower, but um, I think Jack is a testament that you can you can really jump in there and, and start getting your feet wet. So cool, man. Hey, thanks so much for being here. And uh, it's been a pleasure to interview with you. It's been fun, John. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, buddy. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to like our videos. Also, check out tradingsim.com forward slash blog for more content.